What is up guys? Welcome back to Overspray. In today's video, we're working on a new project. Alrighty guys, so today's project is going to be a 2005 Ford GT California Special. And the color is Ford G2 Red Fire Pearl. Now I will say that we are going to be spraying in this video the rear bumper cover and the rear spoiler. As you guys can see, this car has been uh, in quite a few different accidents. So you do have some uh, clear coat failure. You do have some damage from being rear-ended. Uh, quite a different uh, types of damages. There's some scuffs and everything. And of course, the rear spoiler is also going to be resprayed in this video. The rear spoiler has actually been really, really faded. And in better lighting, it looks really, really bad. So, um, so yeah, so this is the project that we're going to be working on. And, uh, well, let's go ahead and get started with this video. So if you guys have been following my community post, you guys know that I got a new Luma 3 Aurora 2 for my Pro Light. And also, I got a Luma spray suit, which is that blue one in there. I haven't taken it out yet, but we're going to be giving that a shot. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and start off this video by removing the rear bumper cover and the rear spoiler. Now, I will say that I don't have a lot of experience with pulling the uh, rear bumper cover off of the Ford Mustang, so it is a little bit of a learning curve for me. And also, I will say that this is quite a long video. And uh, well, many of you guys have been asking for more detailed videos. So this is one of those videos. As I was fiddling with the rear bumper cover, I realized that I needed to remove the rear wheels because well, uh, I needed to gain access to two screws that are actually holding the bumper in place. And these are just basically just two Phillips screws. Uh, once you remove those two Phillips screws, you should be able to pop out the bumper cover out of the bumper bracket. So this is what those two screws look like. And of course, uh, it's basically uh, mimicked on the same side, um, on the opposite side. So basically four screws in total. Uh, there's also side markers on the rear bumper. So you do have to remove the uh, connector in order to uh, remove the uh, bumper cover. So as you guys saw me uh, doing in the beginning, I was trying to pry out this clip. So we are working on the bottom of the bumper cover in order to remove this clip. Uh, basically, you just have to pry them out. And then once that center piece comes out, uh, you should be able to remove the clip. Now, this one was very, very stubborn. So I ended up grabbing some pliers to try to remove it. Uh, but once you do, there are also four nuts holding the, uh, the bumper in place. And to gain access to those nuts, you actually have to go into the trunk and I'll show you where they are. They're a little bit hidden, but as you guys can see in those holes, they, you have nut here. Uh, there is a total of four different nuts that you have to remove in order to uh, be able to pull that bumper cover out. So once you remove those four nuts, you should be able to remove the bumper cover. Um, it did take a little bit of force, um, just a little bit of persuasion, and I was able to remove the bumper cover. Now those clips are actually pretty strong, so it did take um, a little bit of oomph to get those bumper cover that bumper cover off, but eventually I did. Now there's also a harness that uh, you guys can't quite see in here, but um, that harness basically is for not only the side markers, but also the rear license plate frame light. Um, so you do have to disconnect some connectors um, and uh, in order to, uh, to fully remove the uh, bumper cover or else uh, you'll, you will end up pulling the harness. So I did have to disconnect that. And also there's quite a few uh, other clips that I missed. There's a total of three clips at the bottom. I thought there was only one clip holding it, but apparently there was a total of three. So uh, once I was able to remove that though, uh, the bumper cover came right out. Go ahead and put it on my stand here and uh, getting ready to start some work. So now we're going to be moving on to the removing the spoiler. Now the spoiler, I will say, is pretty straightforward. There's only four fastening nuts that is actually holding the spoiler in place. 
Um, but there's also some 3M adhesive that is, well, very, very strong. I was not able to remove the spoiler just because that 3M adhesive was just so bonded on there. And I think probably because it's been on there for such a long time that it really was a, a struggle to be able to remove that spoiler. So I do give it some really good tugs and that spoiler just would not pop off. And uh, so I ended up coming with coming up with an idea of how to remove that uh, that spoiler. And basically what I ended up doing was um, after some frustration, I went ahead and opened the trunk lid and went ahead and grabbed my heat gun. I figured that maybe if I heat up the panel, I should be able to get that adhesive to loosen up. So this is my Drill Master heat gun from Harbor Freight. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just heating up that the backside of where that adhesive is actually located and trying to get that panel nice and hot so that the uh, adhesive or that 3M adhesive uh, will start to loosen up. So after quite a few uh, attempts, I was finally able to remove that spoiler. And uh, you could see my little victory ah. dance here because uh, I, I felt almost defeated just with this damn spoiler. So finally it was able to be removed and then we can go ahead and commence with the body work. Now, taking a look at the parts we're gonna be painting in this video, you guys can see that, well, the bumper seen better days, but the color is pretty much still there. But in comparison to the spoiler, however, the spoiler just looks really, really old and faded. Um, and yeah, I think it's pretty noticeable uh, in this scene right here. So we're going to go ahead and start off by cleaning our parts, getting all that dust and whatever else other contaminants there might be on the bumper. Now, this is quite an, an important step. You do want to clean your parts as best as you can. Uh, reason being is you don't want to sand the dirt and end up embedding that into your paint and also causing more scratches than what are actually intended. Now, we are going to be sanding this bumper, but like I said, you just you want to make sure that your part is clean before you start doing any type of prep work or body work. So after the bumper and spoiler have dried off, I'm going to go ahead and assess our parts and then go ahead and begin with our sanding process. Now I'm using a 180 grit on a DA sander, um, but you do keep in mind that you don't want to use aggressive sandpaper. This is a plastic bumper at the end of the day, and you don't want to leave too aggressive of a scratch because at that point it might be unrepairable. Um, and by the way, it's not super aggressive bodywork that we're actually doing on this. It's more of superficial bodywork, so not much is really needed in order to flatten out um, that uh, those problem areas. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the bumper, flattening down and smoothing out any imperfections and the areas that do need more attention. I'll go ahead and, uh, and sand those areas down and get them ready for glaze or for uh, body filler, depending on uh, the each circumstance. But in this case, um, some of them are very superficial, so glaze is the only thing that's really going to be needed in this case. So after I went ahead and sanded, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the uh, damaged areas and also the, um, the areas that I smoothened out. So you can see that this car has been, or this bumper cover has been rear-ended quite a few different times. So there was actually some creases and some holes, and I try to smoothen out the uh, creases as much as possible. And also you can see that there is a, basically a hole punched out from a license plate bolt, and also um, a little bit more uh, creases along uh, different areas of the bumper basically. And there's also chips and scratches and scuffs and all that. Um, and not only that, you also have some faded paint and clear coat failure at this point. So um, originally he wanted this bumper to be uh, blended. He didn't want the whole, whole bumper to be painted, but unfortunately the bumper was just so far damaged that there would be no way for me to actually blend this bumper out. 
because there was damage basically throughout the whole bumper that there was really nothing I could have done as far as blending. Um, it, the color just would have to be blended out too far out. So we're gonna go ahead and also use our Bondo bumper repair kit from 3M uh, for this a little hole that we have here uh, in the bumper. So this is basically like a um, plastic epoxy, if you will, and it's basically used for filling. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be heating up the bumper cover uh, from both sides, the, the top side and the bottom side, so I can really get that heat to protrude. And then once I get enough heat to be able to make the bumper malleable, then I'll be able to grab a uh, screwdriver and I'll use the back side of the screwdriver, basically the handle side, in order to push from behind, uh, from behind the bumper in order to push up so I can get that uh, pushed in part um, out and basically that, um, that little piece that actually was pushed inwards into the bumper, I'd be able to pop that out and also to level out the bumper. So I will show you right, right now what I'm talking about. As you guys can see, I'm gonna be pushing uh, that affected area with that uh, screwdriver handle and pushing uh, that uh, indented part uh, up. Now, give, keep in mind that because when it's really hot, it's very easy to be uh, pushed too far up. So do keep in mind that you don't want to push too far out. Um, so I just went ahead and pushed it down just to get it level. So once I did that and got it level, um, I went ahead and mixed up some of the uh, Bondo repair kit, uh, bumper repair kit. Um, like I said, it's basically like a, a type of epoxy, if you will. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in that area. Um, this stuff takes uh, quite a bit of time to dry, so do give it uh, enough time. Um, be a little bit patient with this stuff. Now, given that it's such a small hole, um, I just felt the need to just go ahead and fill it with the epoxy. It does come with a patch uh, in the kit, but uh, the patch was really not needed for such a small repair. So at this point, I was working quite a few few hours uh, this is after uh, work as well, so um, I kind of had a long day and didn't have dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and take a 15-minute break and go ahead and have a delicious In-N-Out burger. So once break time was over, it was time to get back to work. Now, of course, I did have to check the epoxy to make sure that it was uh, dry enough to be able to be sanded. And I did touch it, but it was still a little bit tacky. So what I ended up doing is just ended up focusing on other areas that still needed to be repaired, sanded, or glazed at that point. So I went ahead and started to focus on other areas. So taking a look at the areas where I went ahead and applied some glaze off camera. Uh, this was basically done right before my little lunch break. Um, so I went ahead and left this on there so that um, as I was eating, the glaze would actually start to dry. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and begin with the sanding once that dries. And once it did, I went ahead and began my sanding. Now, once again, I'll be using uh, 180 grit sandpaper in order to level off any of the glaze with the DA. And basically I'm just going over those really high spots and then later on I'll be uh, uh, blocking most of that area. But for now I'm trying to get the main components done with the DA uh, just because it makes a work a lot faster and easier. Now the respirator that I'm gonna be uh, using in this video that I've used in many different videos of mine, uh, my 3M TR600 VersaFlow. I love this respirator to be honest. It's got a face shield and it also protects me from any of the chemicals or fumes or uh, basically anything that I'm gonna be doing in my garage. I like to stay well protected as well. So. Now, of course, these are this bumper has been completely sanded. Now, I went up from 180 all the way up to 320 on the areas that uh, were gonna be primered. 
And really, I like to be around the 320 grit before I primer. If you use anything more aggressive, sometimes the primer will not actually cover. And the primer that we're actually gonna be using is a waterborne primer, and it is a 1K primer from Limco. And I'm also gonna be using the USC Handy Mask. This is basically um, a roll of paper with tape on it. So before we go ahead and continue on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the bumper once more just to get all that um, sanding, uh, dust, and whatever else uh, might be on the surface of the uh, bumper cover and get ready for uh, spraying some primer. Now I went ahead and sanded all the areas that needed to be sanded uh, from the glaze and level it off. Um, I also went ahead and blocked it, but of course I didn't actually record some of that because it just takes so long to do some of these things. I have to skip some steps, but I just will mention it. So as you guys can see at the top of this uh, bumper here, you can see how far I actually had to go with the sanding because I was trying to sand the failed clear um, and I was trying to feather edge um, that uh, that faded clear but it just it wasn't really responding too well so I ended up sanding further than I really wanted to um, and there was also some damaged areas on the side of the bumpers here where where you guys are can see where those uh, side markers are there were some scuffs and scratches there so um, that's why the blend wasn't really possible because in order to fix those scratches, um, I'm gonna, I was going to need to do some body work in, in those areas. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and grab my Bulldog Adhesion Promoter and I'm just basically going to go around the areas that uh, have gone down to bare plastic or where I think there might be some problem areas with adhesion. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my Bulldog Adhesion Promoter and go around the areas that... Uh, that need uh, some attention. So after that step, I went ahead and grabbed my handy mask by USC and went ahead and masked off all the area that I didn't want any primer to actually land. I also scuffed the areas before putting uh, any adhesion promoter. I also uh, scuffed uh, areas where um, didn't really need 320 scratches, but needed some uh, of good scratch in order to get the primer to stick. So I went ahead and grabbed my maroon pad and basically um, went over the areas that uh, I couldn't get there with sanding paper. So now it was time to go ahead and mix up some of the primer into the gun. And I'll be using my Tecna Primer spray gun with a 1.8. Now later on, I find out that the 1.8 is a little bit of overkill for this primer, but then again, um, it made really, really quick work of primering this bumper. So do enjoy. So after getting the latest neighborhood watch updated news from my girlfriend, I did notice that there was a couple low spots here on the bumper that needed some attention. So I went ahead and grabbed some glaze 
and glaze the area that needed um, basically some more attention. Now, before you apply the glaze, obviously you do have to sand the primer. So I went ahead and sanded it um, in order to get a good bite for that uh, glaze. And then I'm gonna go ahead and re-sand it. Now, you also you see this area right here. Uh, I actually accidentally touched it while it was still wet and ended up smearing some of the primer. Not a big deal, it could be sanded. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and reapply some more primer anyway. So more than likely that'll be taken care of. But as you guys can see, I went ahead and primer the whole bumper as well. We are gonna be painting the whole bumper just because there was so much damage on this bumper that it just, it basically needed a whole uh, respray of the entire bumper, unfortunately. So, um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and wait for that glaze to dry. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, sand the glaze one more time and then apply another couple coats of primer. Alrighty, so after some few coats of um, BASF Limco primer, uh, waterborne based primer, I went ahead and inspected my work. Now, as you guys can see, it looks pretty good. There are some spots that still need some attention, uh, but for the most part, this is uh, pretty much done. Now, I will say that I did end up getting a few runs uh, and sags. Uh, in my primer and this was basically due to the fact that I was using too large of a tip with this primer This primer is quite thin I would say and it doesn't need uh, such a large tip So I was using a 1.8 to spray my primer, but later on I actually switch to a 1.4 um, Just to get a nice smooth finish at the very end and I also want to point out that I actually use my fan to help dry the the bumper because my compressor is so small it's it, you know it it tends to run a lot while i'm painting and not only that that can end up causing some moisture to build up into the air compressor now i do have a filtration system to be able to catch some of that moisture but you want to minimize the amount of uh, runtime that that compressor actually goes through uh, in order to minimize more moisture now, after the primering stage and waiting it for the primer to actually dry up, I went ahead and put some dry guide coat uh, powder onto the bumper and went ahead and started to block sand the areas um, and make sure that that bumper is nice and uh, pristine as flat as possible. 
um, that's really going to give us a really good paint job. So the next night or the next day, I should say, um, I began to scuff the, um, the spoiler. The spoiler needed um, a lot of scuffing. It didn't really need any body work. It was actually pretty straight. There was no nicks or scratches or anything. It just really needed a good scuffing, but it was very hot this day, and you could see me just dripping in sweat. So that same night, I went ahead and cleaned off the, um, the parts that I needed to spray, and I also went ahead and sprayed a little bit of sealer on some of the breakthroughs. Uh, that I had on the bumper and later on I'll spray a little bit on the um, on the spoiler as well and you could kind of see where that uh, a little bit of that sealer is a little bit tad darker in some areas and that's basically where I sprayed that sealer um, but basically I didn't want to spray over some breakthroughs because that could lead to reactions in your base coat so I wanted to minimize the chances of reaction and also i'm going to go ahead and use this 3m dust control spray to be able to spray the floor to try to help minimize any dust that's going to land um, on my base coat now of course the color that we are going to be sh shooting is uh ford g2 red fire pearl uh, and my reducer that i'm going to be using is a trans star medium reducer and then also we're going to use the d cups uh, disposable cup system and lastly, we're also going to be using the Devilbus Techno Pro Light with the Illuma 3 um, flash flashlight, basically, uh, or spray gun flashlight for your spray gun. Um, anyways, so let's start getting ready to spray. Now, I do have to prep the floor before I do that. Just like I said, try to minimize any um, dust in the paint job because I do some of the body work in my garage, I tend to get a lot of dust on the floor. And I typically like to recommend people to not do their prep work in the same area that they're gonna be painting. And the reason why I do why I say that is because it could lead to a lot of dust in your paint. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. Um, now, for me, I had no choice. I have to do it in my garage. Where else could I do it? um so yes so anyway the prep work had to be done here um so i had so i went ahead and uh sprayed the dust control spray on the floor um and then i went ahead and set up my gun and get ready to shoot some base so as i began to spray this color i noticed that it was quite transparent now, I will say that this color wasn't that hard to spray, um, but considering that this color is very transparent, it has pearl in it, and it was very similar to like a candy as far as its consistency. The, the more layers you put on it, the darker the color got. So you do have to be quite careful with uh, painting this color. But other than that, I did not get any striping or anything like that. Um, with this color so uh, it wasn't too bad but I did have to kind of change my technique uh, midway just to make sure or ensure that I wasn't getting any striping on this bumper and uh, but honestly with this Luma light it actually really helped me in getting the proper coverage and uh, I, and I think that with this light i was able to really see any defects or coverage and how my metallics were basically laying out now i really didn't think that i was gonna uh really like the luma light at first and i really didn't think it was a necessary tool but after using it i almost immediately thought okay this thing is actually pretty good like <laughs> you actually do need this light and i found myself uh, needing the light more than not needing the light, right? And I, I just recently upgraded my lighting. Uh, as you can see on the right side on the wall, you can see a lot of lights, but you can see on the other side of the light, uh, on the other side of the walls, I don't have any lighting and that actually creates some shadows. So the fact that I used the Luma light uh, was able to eliminate some of those shadows and I was able to see where my base was landing and um, basically seeing my base coat coverage. So 
uh, that was uh, one thing that I did find beneficial with the Lumalite. However, uh, later on, I will say that um, with the Lumalite, I was able to see some uh, paint reactions uh, happening before me. So I will point those out in just a sec, but I do end up fixing them and uh, basically uh, not even noticeable, but I will point them out when we get there. Um, now, as far as painting the spoiler, I think I put the spoiler a little too high. Um, I probably should have uh, put it down just a tad bit so that I was able to reach some of those areas a little bit easier. Um, now here you, you notice that I'm, I kind of stopped and I'm looking at the spoiler. Um, and that's because I noticed that there was something going on. There's like a, a little bit of a reaction happening on the spoiler. And I wanted to ensure that the rest of the spoiler wasn't reacting. And I really think um, it was just, it, it might've been water or it might have been fish eyes. I couldn't really tell um, at first, but I could definitely see them starting to come out. So um, I just had to keep an eye on it and uh, and move on so once i sprayed the spoiler i moved back to the to the uh bumper cover because well this uh paint actually dried fairly quickly so it could be the temperature the temperature was right around 77 degrees so perfect for spraying in a garage now you guys do see me change my uh, the angle of the gun i will say with the luma light it, I was getting a little bit tired and my technique was starting to take effect. So I ended up having to readjust my the, the way I was spraying because that Lumalite does add just a little bit of weight. Um, and uh, so I had to readjust my technique in, in order to get this, uh, this color to uh, lay down real nice and flat. So after letting the base coat flash, here is where you could see some of the reactions and you could see where, basically where I had burned through, I went ahead and put sealer, but it was a sealer out of a spray can or out of an aerosol can. And basically everywhere where I sprayed that sealer, I was actually getting some reaction. It was actually frying up in those areas. Um, and basically where I burned through um, into the plastic, right? So, um, so yeah, so uh, what I also checked the spoiler to make sure that there was no uh, reactions, at least on the top side, because obviously the top side is gonna be uh, the area where it's gonna be the most viewed. So how I'm gonna uh, fix those reactions is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a, um, a scotch bright, a gray scotch bright. It could be any of them really and then go ahead and use a 1500 grit sandpaper. Now I usually use 1000 grit sandpaper, but I just didn't have anything, um, you know, more coarser. The only one I had was about 400, 400 grit. So I think that was just a little bit too aggressive. So I went ahead and just opted for the 1500. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and sand those areas smooth. Now, anytime you have a reaction like that, you could just go ahead and sand it, sand it smooth, and then feel it with your finger and see if you could feel it. If you can't feel it anymore, then you should be good and go ahead and add a little bit more base coat to those areas. Now, I also found some nibs, so I went ahead and sanded those very, very lightly until I could get rid of them and uh, basically looked at any other areas where there might be some additional uh, defects. Go ahead and uh, get those done while this base coat is dry and before we go ahead and add some more base coat uh, to our bumper cover. So now that we went ahead and took care of those paint reactions, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my gun and go ahead and just give it an another light coat over some of those affected areas and pretty much go over the whole bumper. Um, in order to get a nice, consistent uh, metallic layout. And uh, there I go again, uh, turning on that Luma light, because like I said, it, it really, really does help. Um, I didn't think I was gonna like it, but honestly, I, I think it's it's well worth the investment. Uh, I will make a second uh, video on just the Luma light itself, um, giving it a review along with also the spray suit. So if you guys wanna see that, uh, make sure you guys comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see that or not. Um, 
or I'll, I guess I'll just pass if you guys don't really respond too well to that. So anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and put down another coat of base. And then I'm gonna go ahead and right after that uh, layout of base, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a second control coat, if you will, and go ahead and spray control coat. Now I am gonna cut this a little bit short just because uh, you know, just to save time on footage because this video is getting quite long. So after doing my double control coat and fixing all the paint reactions that I got, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the bumper and see how we did and make sure that we don't have any paint reacted areas that we might have missed because obviously you don't want to clear over those because then it would be permanent and you'll probably see it right through the clear. So we're going to go ahead and look at our paint reacted area. And as you guys can see, there are no visible uh, paint reacted areas at all. So I think we're going to be good to go uh, as far as clearing this bumper at this point. Um, now I will do a one more coat uh, after this, but I didn't record, but I went ahead and shot a little bit more base coat on uh, some of the spots on the uh, bumper because there were some spots that kind of showed through because this color is pretty transparent. Now, as far as the spoiler goes, um, those fish eyes that I thought I saw uh, were basically... Um, they weren't even fish eyes it was just <laughs> it happened to be from the gun the gun actually spit a little bit and kind of made these little splatter um effects on the spoiler so it actually wasn't fish eyes thank god so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and use a te10 air cap i have never used the te10 air cap for my techno pro light so i'm gonna be using it for um the first stage of clear to see how it does I've heard a lot of good things with the TE-10, so I'm gonna give it a shot for clear. Um, now, the clear I'm gonna be using is, uh, well, I'll show it in a, in a bit, but I also used the TE-10 for my base coat, and I will say that it actually did a pretty good job uh, with the base coat. You do have to run it a little bit higher of a pressure uh, than the TE-20, um, so do keep in mind that it, you know, it, it needs a little bit more pressure, but at the same time, I felt like the compressor wasn't kicking on as much. So going on to our clear, I'm going to be using the Axel Noble Wanda HS8100 2K clear. Now you see that it says HS. I'm not sure if this is truly a high solids clear or not. It seems like more of an MS clear to me. And I'm also going to be using, like I said, the TE10 air cap for clear at least for the first stage just to see how it does and to be honest i have never actually sprayed this clear before so uh, this is going to be the first time i'm going to be trying out the axel noble wanda clear So it was right around this point that I kind of noticed that the TE-10 wasn't really performing up to my expectations with the clear. Um, it could be that the, the clear is quite a bit thicker than some of the other stuff that I have used in the past. And the fact that I haven't used the TE-10 uh, air cap before, um, it was kind of a learning curve really. And I really felt that I couldn't move as quick with the TE-10. I actually had to end up slowing down um, my the speed the, that I'm spraying because it was just going on a little bit too dry and I just did not like how that clear was actually laying down so I wasn't too happy with the TE10 my first go around and also with this clear like I said I think it's a little bit uh, thicker because when I was mixing it up you can tell that it's it, it is a bit thicker uh, than you know some of the other products that I have used in the past 
So I, I want to say the TE-10 probably isn't the best for the Axle Noble Clear. Um, now I'm not sure how it would do with other clears. I'm probably going to have to end up testing that out. But to be honest, I felt like the TE-10 was quite a bit slow and uh, wasn't really uh, putting down that clear wet. Now I will say this is the first uh, coat of clear, so you don't want to go super wet either. But um, I just I noticed that it was just going on way too dry, um, and I will show you how dry that TE-10 um, was actually laying down the clear. But like I said, um, at this point it is the first stage of clear, so you don't want to go. <laughs> and you can see right there that I disapproved of the TE-10, um, but you don't want to go super heavy with the first coat of clear anyways. So it would kind of help me in uh, controlling uh, the wetness of the clear um, and go a little bit dry. But at the same time, that is ultimately also going to affect your finished product. It's going to come out a little bit more uh, orange peely just because it hasn't laid flat. So this is the first coat of clear with the TE-10 and you guys could see it is a little bit dry. Um, now let me get closer so you guys can really take a look at how dry the uh, the clear actually is and you can see uh, yeah it doesn't look the greatest now of course we do have a little bits of trash as well um, and I try to pick some of those out but honestly um, some of them were not coming out <laughs> to be honest there was just too much trash um, so I ended up trying to just bury them uh, the next go around anyway and also the spoiler also ended up drying. So I ended up switching to the TE-20. Now I didn't record uh, me spraying with the TE-20, but you could see a much better finish with the TE-20. And let me go ahead and show you that peel. Um, and you could see much more uh, even and consistent the second go around. And like I said, that, that first coat was just going on way too dry. Uh, with that TE-10. So um, this second coat, like I said, um, really pretty much cleaned up any of the dryness from the TE-10 and uh, really gave me a really nice smooth finish. Now the spoiler as well, also very, very smooth finish and very, right, very guys, consistent. So I just got home and we got the parts for the Mustang nice and dry. Uh, you guys could see some dirt nymphs, so the paint job is definitely not perfect. Not sure if you guys can see right there. Got a little bit of peel on it. So it is gonna need a cut and buff. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this on, on the Mustang and get this going for him. And uh, we'll probably wait probably a couple weeks to uh, cut and buff this on the car. But uh, for now, we're just gonna install it and then I'll show you what it looks like on the car. So once we put the car back together, this is what the bumper ended up looking like on the car. Now I will tell you right off the bat, it is not a perfect match. This was a part that was taken off, painted, and then put back onto the car. And we tried our best with the paint match. Now this is a color that you would more than likely have to blend into the quarters. Now the paint match was close enough to be able to do a blend, but at the same time, this is not what the customer wanted. Um, he didn't want me to blend into the car. Um, and you can see that the car has been sun faded. So you can see that in some area, some parts are actually darker than the rest of the car. I'm not trying to make any excuses or anything, but you know, it kind of is what it is. We are spraying the color by code as you guys can see but overall i think it looks really good and the customer is happy so i think we were able to achieve uh the results that 
Um, basically, I told them that I was capable of doing and I told them it wasn't going to be perfect, but it was going to be close. And he agreed. He said, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be better than what it is. And I think we were able to achieve just that for him. And the fact that him and his wife are very happy with the results, that makes me happy and knowing that uh, I did the best job I could, um, considering that this is painted in a garage. Well guys, there you have it. Another happy customer. Now, I will tell you this, the bumper is not perfect. Um, first of all, there is, I believe there is three different variances of the same color. Um, also the color on the car is actually faded out. So it matches the front portion of the car, but the back part of the car is pretty much faded out to the point where uh, the match is kind of hard to, to get that to match unless I matched faded paint. Um, in which case I don't have the abilities to do that because I don't have a paint system or anything like that. I actually have to get it matched from my paint store. So that is the best I could do for a garage paint job. I think it looks good. Customer is happy. His wife came over here and looked at it and she was like, oh my God, it looks beautiful. So with that, I say it's job well done. Stay spraying guys. Catch you guys on the next one.